guys. Welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. What I have for you today is taking some unsuspecting items from our survival kit, using a little bit of improv, and turning those items into hunting tools or a weapon. Different ways to start fire, filtering or straining water, and then I'm going to demonstrate one of the best military survival rations around. Let's go. we can take this bungee cord and turn it into a weapon. So here is our slingshot and our kit that we use to construct the actual slingshot. Now all these skills are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. But we've got bank line for cordage. That's the whipping technique we use to attach the bungee to our Y stick here. We've got our bungee cord. This is a military type bungee cord. Recommend those because they stretch further and they're a little bit stronger and give us more material to work with. We've got our lighter with our duct tape around it that we can use to construct the pocket. Here we have two examples of what we did with the pocket. The MRE trash right here we used as a framework, attached our tape to it, and then cut out basically a Chevy symbol to use as our pocket. The big square in the center is going to be our pocket. And then we've got two arms left and right that are going to attach to our bungee cords. And all we did was take that Y branch. We've got our whipping of bank line to attach our bungee cord. We cut off our bungee cord to the length desired just for us. It's going to take some guesswork on your part to cut this down, but having a longer bungee cord means we have more material. We can always take away, but we can't add back on once we make that cut. And then we took our pocket, attached it with tape left and right hand side. Prior to that, we just made a simple overhand knot in the end here. And this has two functions, one to keep the bungee cord from unraveling on itself, but then to prevent the bungee cord from slipping as we apply pressure on it, as we pull those knots bite into the tape and prevent the bungee cord from slipping out. And then we just have that square pocket right in the center where we can place our ammo. Just rotate your fingers over top, hold the pocket like this, and then we should be able to hit our target fairly easily. I mean, that's fairly accurate for about an eight inch diameter a piece of cardboard here. So if that was a rabbit and we were at close range, we could probably hit that rabbit and take it out. So we've got that bungee cord, slingshot, duct tape pocket, bank line whipping to hold everything in place on that Y branch. And you can see it's fairly powerful. Our marble ammo is going right through that cardboard and then a few inches into the dirt, we actually have to dig the marbles out of the dirt to pull them back out. But a very powerful weapon and incredibly accurate, at least at closer ranges, to taking out small game for survival. Another item that we have in our kit for constructing shelter are just plastic stakes that we spray painted tan so they blend in with the environment just a little bit more. But we can take this stake, because it's plastic, use the back of our knife to make shavings with the stake and then ignite it with our ferro rod, making improvised tinder.
Now, one way we can strain or filter water to prepare it for a boil in our fire is by using our shemag, moss, and then charcoal from previous fires to make a hasty filter or strainer like this one. We're using some sort of pincushion moss. I'm not exactly sure what kind, but most of the moss in this area is going to be safe for us to use as an improvised filter. Now, with our water kit or the items we bring for water, one item that is great for survival or great just to be out here if we don't want to make trips back and forth to the water source is a sea line bag or some sort of waterproof bag that's collapsible we can unfold it fill it up from the stream and then bring a gallon or two of water up to camp with us that way we don't have to go back down there repeatedly to fill up water and then from here all we have to do is take this water put it through our strainer to get all the icky nasty stuff out of it and then once it's in our canteen cup all we have to do is put it in our fire boil it and it will be safe to drink can do is take that same moss, that pincushion moss, because of its iodine-like properties and helping to treat water and kill bacteria, we can use it as a medical dressing, just like with this bandana or another cloth item, place it over the injury, and then wrap the injury and the moss with a cloth, just like this bandana, to hold it in place, to act as an improvised field dressing to help prevent infection long enough until we can reach that higher level of care. very robust signaling kit as part of our survival kit. We've got a mirror for signaling, a whistle for signaling attached to our compass. We've got a Mylar space blanket with those three X's made from Gorilla Tape that we can use for not only our shelter but as a survival signal as well. And then we've got our headlamps we can passively and actively signal at nighttime with the strobe. But if all we're left with is material from the landscape, we have to apply principles to make sure this signal stands out. So we've got our survival signal set up using color contrast and then maybe a little bit of movement with the leaves blowing. But we created this giant open area of dirt with the X in the middle, green standing up with an outline of leaves to give it a little bit more contrast for search and rescue to see. Now I promised you a military ration and there is nothing better than ranger pudding. All right, for ranger pudding, we get our cup and USGI mess tin spoon here to mix everything up and our purified water from our filter and then our boil inside our canteen. And then we've got our ingredients for the perfect ranger pudding. Instant coffee from the MRE. We've got the sugar and then the creamer. We've got peanut butter and then instead of the cocoa beverage based powder we've got the cocoa 
or chocolate protein drink powder. And then finally, the piece de resistance, and that's the crackers. Now there are two types of Ranger pudding guys out there. There's the crackers or there's the peanut butter. I am both, so I'll do both crackers and peanut butter. I have our creamer, our sugar, instant coffee here. dump all of that inside there crush those up inside the package here okay we'll just add a few now we may add a few more once we get the water and the peanut butter in there there's all our dry ingredients in there let's put it in a little bit and I'll start to thicken up in there that's almost perfect right there Get your minds out of the gutters. I know what you're thinking. There's our peanut butter and our pudding. Crackers are in. I think it's time for a taste test. That's some good stuff. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me and for this channel, for all your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.